the examiner know whether individual students have actively participated and earned the team mark. This is the perennial challenge to um, our faculty, I suppose everyone. This presentation will discuss some of the assessment issues faced in a first year health science subject and the team journal, which, was, which has been developed to record the contributions of individual team mem members. The team journal is also used to capture evidence of student achievements of cornerstone graduate capabilities in the areas of teamwork and problem solving. Over to you guys. We're going to go conversational. No PowerPoints to lean on. OK. Thanks, Lee. Uh, I'd like to introduce Diane Williamson. Diane is from the School of Public Health and Human Biosciences. And I'm Maureen Long, and I'm from the Department of Social Work and Social Policy. As Lee said, we're just really going to have a conversation. Both Diane and myself have been involved from the foundation, Diane a bit before me, but from the foundation of the interprofessional practice subjects which introduced team learning. And so we've been involved from that beginning to in the development of the subject and also as coordinators and also as facilitators. So we've got quite a bit of experience of actually delivering. So what we're going to just have is a bit of a conversation today to share some of the issues and challenges we've experienced as well as some of the positives that have occurred looking at team-based assessments in our interprofessional practice subjects. So in 2009 the faculty introduced this, the core first year and with that an approach to, um, using inquiry-based learning and then came the team-based assessment. So um, I think I might ask you then, I mean the focus in doing that was around the applicability of that to, for students to take to the workplace. So Don, I might ask you now to sort of comment a bit on what, what's been happening. All right. Um, we have a huge cohort of students um, in this subject, um, getting upwards to um, 2,000. Uh, but the students are allocated to workshops of only 30 students and then within that to teams of five teams of six students. And so they have a workshop uh, each week, which might be one or, or two hours. So that's where their um, active learning takes place. So lots of learning activities within that. Because we're in uh, inquiry-based learning, um, many of those activities and uh, assessments are focused around uh, specific uh, themes. The assessments are uh, mixed in terms of individual or team-based um, assessments and where uh, marks are allocated to a team for an assignment, um, that's where sometimes there's a bit of angst as far as the, uh, uh, the, the students are, are concerned. We're dealing mostly, of course, with uh, school leavers who have been so focused in their previous years on individual achievement um, and focused on that exam at the end of the year. Uh, don't we all hate that question from students, is this going to be on the exam, um, when we're trying to encourage their, their learning, not just a focus on, on assessment. Uh, so some positive comments from students about uh, doing this uh, team-based um, learning. They really uh, have appreciated the opportunity to develop a network with students. It feels as though they're within a, um, a learning community. So they get to know their team members um, and they really appreciate the fact that they're sharing their learning, they're supporting each other's learning and when there is an assignment task that uh, they're sharing the, the workload as such um, with that. Of course there are some negative issues as well, the personality clash, the dysfunctional uh, teams and issues when as there inevitably will be, there will be what we might um, call a, a, a team loafer. You know, the, the person who doesn't contribute to the conversation, um, doesn't do their bit of the assignment until midnight before it, um, it, it's due. And that could be because they've got different um, goals, different learning styles, but also because of the diversity of the students we're, we're dealing with. We've got a sprinkling of mature age and international students and of course those who may feel um, not confident enough um, to make a, um, a contribution. Uh, and the students who are good achievers uh, will complain if someone who's a team loafer gets the same mark as they do when that team member doesn't seem to have earned it. But what about uh, from the facilitator perspective? What issues have we faced with that? I think from the facilitator perspective they're somewhat similar, Di, in terms of what facilitators get concerned about. And I think that becomes a bit of a focus on the equity 
So how do we manage if a student we don't think has contributed actually gets a good mark? What's the equity in that? And I think we've become a bit focused often on, on that point as if that was kind of the, the sum total of it. Um, I think facilitators have certainly benefited and I can see that students benefit from the things that you've identified in terms of relationships and student learning in a collective um, and moving a bit away from the sort of focus on the individual. But I think that people too get concerned that well, what, what's that doing for students if they feel they can get a bit of an easy ride and still get an okay mark? And, and then what does it feel like then the facilitators feel concerned for those students who are very focused on trying to transfer or to get really top marks, what does it mean to them if they're hanging around with someone who's not contributing? Mm -hmm. So what about some of the strategies that we've used <coughs> to try and measure this? Okay, so we've tried quite a few things over the years and I just want to talk about two of the, I think what we've found to be the most successful strategies mm -hmm. and one of those has been a team learning agreement which we do in a structured way so there are a variety of things that we ask the teams at the beginning of the semester to have a conversation around um, what level of achievement are they, um, they they're striving for, um, how are they going to work together, um, how and when are they going to communicate with each other outside um, workshops, how are they going to split yep. the various assessment tasks, um, what are they going to do if there is someone who's not contributing um, and so on. So right at the beginning of the semester they develop that team learning agreement and then after they've completed their first team task we get them to do a reflective exercise where they review their team effectiveness and also we ask them to do an individual uh, reflection on how well they are actually contributing and enhancing or holding back um, the team and to review their team learning agreement about a third of the way through this semester. Um, so that seems to be a, a good way um, of focusing. The other thing that we've been using is what we call a, um, a team journal. So this is a bit like um, has a, a section for each student where they write a weekly diary entry explaining what they have done to contribute to the team functioning but also <coughs> contributing towards the, the task or the product that they're achieving uh, at the end of that, that several mm. weeks. Um, so through this we're trying to get the students to be self-reflective and to realise that they're developing skills in teamwork in problem-based, um, yeah, a problem solving um, and inquiry research. Mm -hmm. so trying to get them away from just focusing on they're doing this um, um, as an assessment um, task. We also ask the team to allocate a percentage contribution uh, for each team uh, member so that the process um, is transparent mm -hmm. yeah. as far as the facilitator is concerned. Um, but there's some things that have worked. <laughs> okay. Let's be honest and share some well, things that haven't been so successful. There have been a couple of attempts along the way that haven't proven to be quite so successful. One was where students had the opportunity to write a comment about another student mm -hmm. and that we couldn't access the comments that they were writing and not all operated from a perspective of diplomacy in writing those comments. Mm -hmm. So some of those were perhaps not written in a spirit of collegiality and so, and, and as well, we couldn't access them, so that wasn't very helpful. Another attempt was applying a mathematical formula to um, to determine how much people had contributed. That proved an incredibly arduous task. So, if you had 30 students and you were applying this mathematical formula and then you were adjusting marks accordingly, it was really the sum total of your marking contribution for the whole year. It took that long. So they were two of the things that didn't really work quite as well, but we've moved on since then, haven't we? Yeah. And in fact, one of the other things that, that's changed is that in the beginning, we had a large volume of team assessments. We've moved away from that now, and we only have 20% of these core subjects are actually -based, have team-based assessments. So mm -hmm. we've moved. So we've actually flipped it because in the beginning, 80% yeah. of the marks were based on team um, activities. Yeah. Now it's 80% of marks based on individual mm. uh, activities. That's right. Mm. Okay. So I guess what we're trying to do with this um, both inquiry based learning and this focus on, on team um, activities is to build those students generic skills in parallel with them building the, the subject um, content yep. um, knowledge. Okay, so probably in conclusion, have you got a final comment? That was my conclusion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was so busy focusing my, on my own, <laughs> sorry. Um, 
look, I suppose one of the things I've, I've thought along the way is that we want to move a, a bit away from that sort of worrying whether, you know, how much has been equitable. Yeah. Because I think in the workplace, we want, uh, well, in preparing students for a complex world workplace, we want them to understand the world isn't always quite as fair as we might like and that our colleagues may work to differential levels too. Yes. And I think that what we want to be able to do is focus our students on developing their professional selves. And so even if someone's perhaps not pulling the weight the same way they would like them to do, we've got to focus on who we can be and the best we can be. And so I suppose I, I think that perhaps we don't always want to just focus on, you know, who's contributed this amount and that amount. We, we have to recognise it's a diverse world and the diverse capabilities and support people to you know, have the wherewithal to be able to challenge quietly and but assertively when people aren't contributing but also to say okay that's kind of the workplace and that's the world and how can I be the best. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think that's kind of where we got to. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So do you think that you over assessing your team is no good because you have good? What was well, that hasn't just been a decision for these particular subjects. That's been a decision for the um, faculty as a whole for our, our first year um, subjects. Um, Recognising that some students some uh, are A-type personalities and uh, you know, they really are striving for a high mark. Sometimes the students are in competition with each other because they're hoping to transfer um, into another course um, at the end of the, the year. So we certainly haven't had as much angst from the students about teamwork and mark allocation um, as we've gradually moved to more of an individual assessment. And um, I think, you know, in the early days it'd be fair to say I was a bit concerned that there were some students who really were getting through on the basis of the team marks. You could see that they were getting absolutely disastrous marks for their individual assignments and some of them not even submitting their individual essay at all because they knew they had enough marks to get through on the team assignment. So I think it's a, it's a much fairer assessment of the student's achievement of the learning outcomes. Just a question about learning outcomes. Um, it's, you know, it's interprofessional practice and so in terms of authenticity, or, you know, the team based assignment fits me mm -hmm. to that. So just wondered if you could speak to that aspect in terms of the interprofessional nature. Okay, I'll let you have a turn at that. You're talking about how the sort of work into discipline really? Well, no, yeah, well basically, yeah, you know, the subject is into professional yeah. learning and, you know, the teamwork encapsulates that nicely yes. in terms of the, the method of the system. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm just saying, now that that's less of a, um, mm -hmm. that method is less emphasised, Okay. The students still work often in teams, so even if it's an individual assessment, the way the classes are structured, they still sit in teams and still work from that team perspective. And the focus is very much around thinking interprofessionally, even in addressing whatever the um, inquiry might be. So it's not just around how we assess it, you know, in that formal way, but it's also about how we work together, what will be some of our challenges, what will work well, that kind of thing. So I think we've still got the focus. We're just not assessing it to the same level. Yeah. Mm. The case studies or inquiries they're working on mm. um, simulate those that they would face in a work situation um, in the health industry um, where there would be a, a, a group of professionals working together. So mm. that's still very much the, the content or curriculum mm. of the subject. Mm. Is, uh, so I don't know that you know, but is it um, that the students work together in a group or they work on it? separate classes, assignments? Uh, it's, it's a mixture. So there will be team assignments that they work on and that might result in a presentation or a report or a poster or um, whatever. Um, but they're, they're also supporting each other's uh, in terms of working on an individual um, essay as well. Sorry, but do they do that in class? Yeah, there's some time in class and there's... Yeah. Now there's some time in class to work on some team-based activities, but they, they do need to have some time outside of class. Right. So mm -hmm. do they have? Do you set up an online platform for them, or do they work in their teams? They sort that out themselves. They sort that out themselves, and many of them uh, work um, get together physically. Yep. Um, you see them sitting on the floor of the Western mm -hmm. Lecture Theatres and the library, so full mm -hmm. of students working in teams now, um, and they oh, many of them set, set up, up Facebook pages, Facebook pages, yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
six. Thanks for that. I'm um, just interested in the uh, peer assessment of contribution because uh, you know it's been a pretty vexed area in the faculty. And I know we've got some staff who feel very strongly that we should have a more amazing peer review because we all standardised, particularly across a large number of students. So I was interested to hear what you were doing, which that's probably a little bit more what I do on my own subjects, but they're much smaller in terms of numbers. So I'm just interested in how that's working with students. Are they comfortable that sort of thing you're doing for assessment of peer contribution is kind of fighting things a bit more, or do you think there's still some bumpy parts to that way of doing it? For, uh, for me as a workshop facilitator, um, my students have found that a really um, good way because uh, if they have got the team loafer, they can put them down as only making a 10% contribution whereas other team members got 20. Or if there's someone who really has taken a lead and gone over and above, they can say, okay, well my contribution was 35% and everybody else's was, was 20. Um, we take the position that everybody in the team will get the team mark. Nobody gets higher than that. But if the facilitator can see there's an individual student who hasn't been present at workshops and where the team has rated them down, the facilitator will then um, sit down with the team and say, is this a reflection and may reduce the, the mark. And so we have some guidelines for the workshop facilitators on um, a fair way of doing yeah. that. And we, as coordinators, we moderate that yeah. process too to make sure that it's fair. Some teams still decide everybody will get the same percentage contribution, no matter how much or how little they contribute. Um, but that, that has worked um, yeah. quite well. Yeah. Mm. I don't think it's such an issue with students currently. I think obviously changing from that 80% assessment to 20% obviously has a big impact for being mm. important. Okay, we might uh, st stop there if that's okay uh, and move on to some of the other presenters. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Maureen, uh, Thank you.